Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is Friday, March 22nd, 2019. Looking at our solar wind speeds, right now it's sitting at 314.1 kilometers per second with a density of 3.4. Our sun has two sunspots to still speak of, AR2735 and AR2736. 2735 is on its way out, but AR2736 has continued to grow and will be a threat for C-class solar flares as it has for the past two days. Sunspot number 49, and I'll get more on that here later. Taking a look at our KP indices, we have a quiet one right now with a 24 hour max of one as well. And our TSI came in on March 13th, 2019 at 1360.7332. Taking a look at the SDO in motion, we do have a coronal hole that is turning towards Earth. We will expect geomagnetic unrest sometime around March 26th from this current coronal hole that will be Earth facing. And before that, we do have a geomagnetic storm warning for March 23rd. NOAA forecasters say there is a 75% chance of geomagnetic storms on March 23rd when a coronal mass ejection is expected to sideswipe the Earth's magnetic field. Storm levels could reach category G2, which is moderately strong. During G2 class storms, auroras may be seen in the northern tier of the United States and as far south as New York and Idaho. And a few days ago, Sunspot AR2736 didn't even exist. Now the rapidly growing active region stretches across more than 100,000 kilometers of the solar surface and contains multiple dark cores larger than Earth. Moreover, its complicated magnetic field is crackling with C-class solar flares. In the grand scheme of space weather, C-class solar flares are not considered to be major events. However, these explosions are noteworthy now because the sun has recently been so quiet. Solar minimum is underway. In context, C-class flares represent a real uptick in solar activity. They can ionize the top of Earth's atmosphere, disturb short radio communications, and even hurl CMEs towards the Earth. And now here's Mari. Thanks, Jake. This update is inspired by someone who left a comment in one of my Nebraska updates. I believe the thumbnail said, flooded out, our farms are suffering. The time to prep is now. In the title, it said, farmers unable to plant crops. This gentleman put, everything's growing just fine here. Lots of great snow melting off. Lakes that were normally empty are full. And you guys don't know what you're talking about with flooding on farmland. Newsflash, flooding enriches farmland soil with nutrients needed for healthy growth and flushes out old soil. Yes, livestock losses, but the dead cattle will be used for fertilizer. There's plenty of other ranches around the country that are benefiting from this crazy weather. And yes, there is damage in some areas. You get more benefits from this weather than negative. Gotta get that content and views, though. <sighs> We're not making up these tragic, catastrophic events and discussing them for clicks and views. The fact is our farms in the United States and many farms throughout the world are suffering due to the climactic changes we are seeing that have been proven by science only to get worse over the next three decades. So I would like Jack why don't you go ahead and tell those farmers who've lost everything, these farmers who've had farms for generations wiped out, why don't you tell them it's no big deal? Uh, we here at GSM have no problems discussing climate adaptation, prepping, and just being prepared for anything that can happen. These events can happen anywhere in the world. Are you ready if one of these storms were to come into your town and flood you out? That's the mindset we want people in. Are you ready? And unfortunately, with today's society, the answer is no. An update on Nebraska. 
A state of emergency is still in effect in Nebraska after these massive floods triggered by rapid snowmelt, ice-covered rivers, and heavy rain dumped by this major late winter storm. More heavy rain is expected in the region by the end of the week. The financial impact could be more than now $1.3 billion. Nebraska Governor Pete Ricketts announced on Twitter that includes $449 million in damage to roads, levees, and other infrastructure, $440 million in crop losses, which actually in other articles I've read is much higher than that, and $400 million in cattle losses. Let's take a look at some more of this flood footage. We would like to hear from people in Nebraska, Iowa, and surrounding areas that are affected by this flood. Leave a comment below as to what your personal experiences have been with this flood. We hope you're enjoying these short updates. I will have uh, some more content out with Volcano Update. I, I have that planned, so please stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to GSM. Please like and share.